Hi, come on in. Hi, I'm Allison. Hi, I'm Jacqueline. We're fourth year radiological technology students. And we're going to introduce you to the radiography profession. We'll highlight some of the aspects of radiological technology that you may not have known about. See you soon! This is a typical x-ray room. The types of procedure we would do in here would be um, chest x-rays, imaging of the, any bones and the abdomen. Um, this would be the x-ray tube. Um, there's a light here that helps us see where we're centering. Um, you, the tube moves up and down and also angles in several different directions. And this is a special table that we use in x-ray and we can do imaging on top of the table. So the patient would sit on the table and then they could put their leg or something on the cassette and then we would take a picture of it that way. Or if it's a thicker body part, there's a tray down here called the Bucky tray. And the cassette goes in here. Like that. And then you line up your x-ray tube to your Bucky. And then from here, you float your table top around to put the patient in the right position. Most x-ray rooms also have a wall stand where we do upright x-rays such as chest x-rays. It also has a bucky uh, just like the table does. So we put that in and then we would just line the tube up to the wall bucky and we would just take the image. This is a fluoroscopy room. This is used for functional studies such as with the gastrointestinal system. Um, this equipment is an under table tube equipment which means that the x-ray tube is actually underneath the table as opposed to the general room that we saw where the x-ray tube is above the table. This equipment on the top is called an image intensifier and what this does is it actually captures the x-rays that come up through the table and it converts it into an image which then appears onto the television screen. So this is basically a live real time imaging as opposed to just a single image um, in the general room. During functional studies, certain substances called contrast agents are used, which help highlight certain anatomical structures. An example of a contrast agent that is commonly used during GI studies is barium sulfate. It's a thick, white substance which occurs naturally. For a study such as an upper GI, the patient is required to drink the barium, which looks like this. So you put a little bit into a cup and the radiologist will get the patient to drink it and as they're drinking it they'll take pictures of the barium as it's going down, which is clearly seen on the camera or TV. This is a mobile x-ray machine. We use this equipment when a patient is too sick to come down to the department. We can take this machine up to their bedside and do the x-ray right with the patient in their beds. Radiation exists naturally. The sun, for example, is a source of radiation. Radiation can also be man-made and used in many different ways. It can be used to sterilize medical equipment, preserve food, and even cook food, such as using a microwave. X-radiation is just a type of radiation that is used in the medical field for diagnostic imaging procedures. Radiation can be harmful to humans if given in large doses. Radiological procedures involve only a short exposure to low-level radiation. Flying in an airplane can give you more radiation than a single chest x-ray. CT, or computed tomography, uses x-radiation to create detailed cross-sectional images of the body. One advantage CT has over general x-ray is that it prevents superimposition of structures, which allows pathologies to be visualized very clearly. Certain CT procedures require the introduction of contrast to highlight certain structures and systems within the body. Sometimes the contrast can be 
in the form of a drink, um, but sometimes it needs to be introduced via an IV. This is the angiography suite. Angiography is the radiographic examination of blood vessels and it involves the injection of contrast media. Similar to GI studies, contrast media is used. However, in this case, it's a water-soluble, non-ionic, iodinated contrast media, which just looks like a clear liquid. Um, it is usually injected through a catheter in the femoral artery. The angiography team consists of an interventional radiologist, a radiological technologist, as well as a scrub nurse. These procedures are sterile procedures, such as would occur in an operating room. Mammography is the radiographic examination of breast tissue. Images are created with a combination of x-radiation and compression of the breast. Regular mammograms are crucial for the early detection of breast cancers. Lesions as small as 2 millimeters that can't be detected through physical examination are visualized on a mammogram. Radiological technologists are needed in the OR to operate fluoroscopy equipment. This equipment is similar to that used in GI procedures, except that it's in the form of a C-arm and is mobile. The C-arm is designed so that the X-ray tube and the image intensifier are attached by a support arm, which is in the shape of a C. This is then attached to a generator and a control console. Some examples of exams that utilize fluoroscopy include orthopedic cases, pacemaker insertions, line insertions, urology cases, nerve blocks, and neurology cases. Similar to angiography procedures, x-ray technologists have to work in a sterile environment. Bone densitometry is a technology that uses x-radiation to help measure the density of bones. It's useful in diagnosing pathologies such as osteopenia and osteoporosis. The images that are taken for a bone density scan are of the lumbar spine and hip. It's a low dose radiation procedure compared to general radiography. It's such a low dose in fact that the x-ray technologist can actually remain in close proximity to the patient during the exam without wearing lead apparel. We hope you enjoyed your introduction to the radiological technology profession. As you can see, it's more than meets the eye. What was that? What are you doing? Mammography is the physical <laughs> sex rays, um, extremities, abdomen. Hi there.